Get ready for some heavy lifting, because today on Made in Virginia, we're going to show you a piece of equipment that can perform jobs that usually require multiple machines. It's a telescopic boom crawler crane, and it's made right here in Virginia. Made in Virginia is brought to you by At Union Bank and Trust, we salute the dreamers, the thinkers, the doers, the believers, the builders, and the makers. Thanks to your vision, hard work, and innovation, you make Virginia shine. Union Bank and Trust, a partner of Virginia business and a proud supporter of Made in Virginia and Virginia Public Broadcasting. t -Mike, Honoring Virginia's manufacturing heritage and proudly supporting Made in Virginia. T Mike, we drive industry. And a very special thanks to Made in Virginia supporters. The Woodrow Wilson Presidential Library and Museum in Stanton, Virginia. A truly unique Made in Virginia experience. The Greater Augusta Regional Chamber of Commerce, a partner for success. And the Law Offices of Allen and Carwile. A crawler crane can go anywhere with almost no restrictions. You see, a crawler crane is like a tank. It is self-propelled, running or crawling on tracks, not wheels. Certainly not a stationary piece of equipment. A crawler crane's primary job is to pick and carry loads. This capability often eliminates the need for multiple pieces of heavy construction equipment on the job site. I think you would say the versatility of these cranes and just the ability to do multiple uh, applications, outfit, whether it's heavy lift, whether it's electrical work with power lines and setting power poles, whether it's building bridges on a or retaining walls on a highway job, uh, tank building, uh, petrochem factories. There's so many different applications that a telescopic boom crawler crane that we make here in Virginia can do. The Tadano Mantis crane can pick up, carry, telescope, and rotate a big load up to 130 tons and deliver it to where it is needed. A truly fascinating and even beautiful piece of equipment, today's state-of-the-art crawler cranes are made from the ground up in Virginia. Pick and carry is really one of the major selling points of a telescopic boom crawler crane rough terrain cranes, all terrain cranes, you know, other types of cranes that have tires. Their major drawback in a lot of cases is you have to set up outriggers and be level when you're doing any picks. So what we have that's really special about this particular type of crane is that because it's on crawler tracks, you can pick a load and then you can travel with it. So that makes it really great for any kind of project where you need to move something from here to there, and it's more than just 50 feet. It's 100 feet, 200 feet, you know, half a mile. And it's something that you're doing repeatedly or something that you're doing in succession. Um, it's something that no other type of crane really does. There are certain job sites where if you just wanted to lift, a heavy lift, you can get certain cranes for just that, but to actually be able to walk with it or carry it, it's just such an advantage to, depending on what you're doing. I mean, if you're you know, setting uh, power poles, the ability to grab the pole, auger in the hole, set it down, take a man basket up, you know, as they get the lines ready to go, electrical companies love it. We have always designed the product to meet or exceed the customer expectations. And I know a lot of companies say that, but really, Internally, we have very high standards. 
So we don't want to say, well, it'll lift 100 ton, but only if you add these extra things and you do it this one particular way. You know, we say, okay, it, if we say it needs to do this, you just need to be able to go out and do it. Richlands, Virginia and Claypool Hill in southwestern Virginia are small coal mining towns, both possessing a heritage that is synonymous with hard work, meaning that the men and women who work here, who build these cranes, have a keen sense of know-how and take pride in exceeding expectations no matter what the challenge. And building the world's best crawler cranes is certainly a challenge these Virginians and this Virginia manufacturer live up to. Its legacy line is the 6010A, the 9010A, 110MXA, and its newest line, the Global Teleboom Crawlers or GTC series with a Model 600, a Model 800, and the granddaddy of all crawler cranes, the GTC Model 1200, capable of picking up and moving a load of up to 130 tons. The boom can reach up to 47 meters, that's 155 feet, and with the added fly jib, can reach a total of 269 feet. Innovation is something that we've been really committed to, especially over the past four to five years. Uh, the GTC series that we've been working on has been our real first big development project uh, project since Tadano's purchase of the Mantis Cranes brand. So it's something where we've been able to take a step back, start looking at the product, a family of products, so that it's, you know, we're going to develop this many models, we're going to have them related in a certain way, we're going to add these features that we see would really help customers, that people have asked for, that we think are good, that we've always kind of wanted, but were difficult to add on older models. So we've always tried to, to move ahead and do something new and innovative. No matter where the job is or under what conditions, the crawler cranes made in Virginia are by definition the right tool for the job. Now that you know what a crawler crane is and what it is used for, let's find out how Tadano Mantis makes these world-class cranes right here in Virginia. The manufacturing of the cranes takes place in two nearby facilities. The Claypool Hill facility is where it all begins. Here, the machinists, mechanics, and welders of Tadano Mantis take raw steel and cut, machine, weld, fashion and fit it into the elemental parts called the weldments that make up the crawler cranes. The component parts which are manufactured at the Claypool Hill facility include the boom, the track frames, the extended beams, the car body, and the upper rotating frame, or URF. The raw material for these foundational parts of the crane are massive and must be delivered via overhead cranes to the workstation in which they will be manufactured. Part numbers and other tracking information are written on the myriad of parts that are manufactured here at Claypool Hill. Welding is a high craft at Tadano Mantis because when you're building something this big designed to lift and carry up to 130 tons and with so many moving parts, it had better be strong. The car body is the main weldment and structural portion of the crane on which much of the crane is mounted. This includes the slew bearing on which the upper rotating frame will sit. It provides 360 degrees of rotation. The track frames are built at Claypool Hill. Think of the tracks as the feet of the crawler crane. The tracks are designed to accept various types of shoes depending on the job specifications and ground conditions. The components of the track frame are the travel drives, bottom rollers, and the chain. Here, a track frame is being built. The track drive will mount in this hole when completed. For the GTC 1200, the track, from front to back, is a whopping 22.9 feet in length. The extend beams are also built here at Claypool Hill. Steel for the extended beams is fit up and welded together. One end of the extended beam will be inserted into a large channel on the car body. The track frames will be attached to the opposite end. 
Think of the extend beams as legs which extend and retract from the car body. The extend beams widen or narrow the crane's footprint from 12 to 19 feet. The track is narrowed for transport or working in tight situations. The tracks are extended in most cases for a more stable working base. The raw boom sections arrive from the supplier already formed with the top and bottom channels welded together. Fittings are welded onto the ends of each boom section. The bore for the boom hoist is built and welded on the first boom stage. There are numerous moving parts, cylinders, cables, and sheaves that support, extend, and lift the load. Tight tolerances within fractions of an inch are critical on the boom to make everything work. Single boom stages can reach out to as long as 40 feet long by 4 feet high. The GTC 1200 has five boom stages. The boom is assembled one stage at a time, smallest to largest. Stages are inserted one into the next. Cylinders with attached sleds, pulleys in a bracket that slides as the boom extends, are inserted and pinned into the stages. Steel cables pass over the sleds and attach to the stages, allowing the boom to extend and retract smoothly. Finally, sensors, valves, and hoses are installed. The boom head is assembled with pins, bearings, and sheaves, commonly called pulleys. The head will extend upwards to 155 feet and is the working or lifting end of the boom. The working range of the boom can be extended another 105 feet with the use of a jib. The upper rotating frame is fit and welded. The side frames are fit and welded to the base of the URF. The top of the side frames is bored for the boom's main pivot pin. Once completed, these massive parts that make up the world's finest crawler cranes are shot blasted, primed, and painted. From there, the parts are transported from Claypool Hill, four miles up Virginia Route 460, to the Richlands facility for assembly, testing, and shipment to the customer or directly to the job site. One of the first steps at Richlands is to attach completed track frames to the extend beams, which are in turn installed into the now completed undercarriage, which consists of the car body, slewing gear, extend beams, track frames, and tracks. The standard engine used in the global Teleboom Crawler Model 1200 is a Cummins Diesel QSL9. It is a six-cylinder, water-cooled, turbocharged, and after-cooled engine. The QSL9 has a maximum output of 350 horsepower at 2100 revolutions per minute. The main hydraulic pumps are mounted onto the flywheel. The hydraulic system uses right at 366 gallons of hydraulic fluid. The system's output is over 250 gallons per minute at 2100 RPMs with a maximum of 5,000 pounds per square inch. Additional engine components, the radiator and cooling system and exhaust system, which make up the standard engine package, are bolted onto the engine and the engine frame. The now completed power plant is ready for installation. It will be bolted to the upper rotating frame. In addition, the fuel tank, drive system monitors and controls, counterweights, and hydraulic valves are attached. The cab, which is typically custom built to the customer specifications, and the control room for the crane is also installed onto the upper. One of the final steps is to pin the cab tilt cylinder to the cab structure. Once both the undercarriage and upper are completed, it is time to deck the crane. The final fit of the upper to undercarriage is a testament to the skilled Virginia machinists, welders, and mechanics that make the Tadano Mantis cranes. With the decking of the crane completed, the skilled worksmanship continues here at the Richland plant. Hydraulic hoses and electrical wiring is installed. No detail is overlooked. These cranes must be highly reliable, made to last a long time, and work in the harshest environments all around the globe. Next comes the all-important installation of the boom assembly. 
the boom is attached to the upper with the large pivot pin and on the boom's first stage with the boom hoist cylinder. With the boom assembly now attached, all hydraulic and electrical components including sensors, cameras, monitors, and remote control components are attached. Now completed, the GTC 1200 is just over 55 feet long and weighs in at 262,000 pounds. These cranes are built to work safely on big jobs, so before they are delivered to the customer or job site, all functions, including operational and load monitoring and feedback, remote control, automated setup and takedown, and of course the primary task to pick and carry a heavy load up to 130 tons is tested and calibrated to exacting specifications. What we do in the shop here after assembly is we take the crane out of the shop, we check every function of the crane basically through a function verification document. Um, every one of the functions is timed to make sure it's within a certain tolerance. Um, we do some flow adjustments to put everything in time. Inside the air-conditioned, ergonomically designed cab is a full set of instrumentation that provides constant feedback from all aspects of the crane's operation, including three cameras that give clear views of the job site and load monitoring systems that display continuous information on the lifted load versus capacity. The Tadano Mantis cranes are also capable of complete remote control operation. Utilizing a highly user-friendly remote control panel, you do not need to be in the cab to start up and operate this workhorse. All the functions an operator would find in the cab are right at your fingertips. Meaning in the hands of a skilled operator, the job, large or small, will be done safely and in the most efficient manner possible. I mean, you get into some uh, dangerous, uh, what you could do, job site type stuff. Uh, maybe it's on an oil or gas exploration, and the ability to put that crane in position and do the work without having to have a man in there, just as a safety application, is huge for a lot of companies. And that's a lot of the feedback we've got with several of our latest remote orders. But before any cranes are shipped from this Virginia plant, they are thoroughly inspected and no detail is overlooked. Well, when the crane comes out of, our, out of our shop, we functionally test every function on the crane to make sure it was in specifications. We do all the safety checks on everything, make sure everything is within tolerance uh, before it moves to the next step. Uh, we do take it out in what we call test track uh, function timing, performance timing. Once the GTC is passed inspection, it has the capability of disassembling and making itself ready for shipment. The process takes about 15 minutes, and with the exception of pulling a few pins, the crane pretty much takes itself apart. Because most of the Mantis crawler cranes are shipped directly to the customer at the job site, the cranes must be ready to go to work upon hitting the ground, and just as the crane disassembled itself, it will also reassemble itself at the job site upon delivery. Basically, when we ship the crane, I mean, the fluids are full, it's full of fuel, it's ready to go right to a job site and work. Southwestern Virginia, long known for its coal mining, also maintains a legacy for manufacturing world-class products like the Mantis cranes. The area is rich in natural beauty, but its best assets are the Virginians who take pride in knowing that what they produce is the world's finest. I think it's just part of the, the culture that we have. I mean, it's a lot of work goes into these cranes, and nobody wants to, to spend 40, 50 hours every week working on stuff that, that isn't right that doesn't perform, that the customer is not happy with. Everyone wants to do a good job and they want to be proud of their work. Well, I guess I've been with the company nine years now. It's a great place to work. Um, when, I came to the, when I came to the job here, I was an assembler by trade anyways. You know, I felt a, a real level of pride in my work and pride in actually seeing what we sell go to a customer, the customer satisfied, the customer safe operating our cranes.
To Don Romantis means a great deal to Southwest Virginia and the jobs that they provide for several employees in our area and they're jobs that these people enjoy, that they're jobs where they've gone and gotten schooling in order to be able to do these jobs. We partner with uh, Southwest Virginia Association for Manufacturing, SVAM, uh, MTC Manufacturing Technological Center. And they, um, they are a training guide. They provide training for, um, for, for industries like welding, uh, machining, um, which is actually a pool for us to choose from. A lot of our, uh, as I said before, a lot of our applicants, they come from the, the coal mining industry. They just need to have those skills that they've got. They need to have them honed. The Southwest Virginia Alliance for Manufacturing works with manufacturers in the region and different partners to promote the sustainment and advancement of manufacturing in Southwest Virginia. So that's the big picture. So how we do that is we work to link manufacturers up with the resources that are available to them in Southwest Virginia. Some of those training resources and some of those otherwise employment resources and things like that. And then a big thing that we do is what we're doing today is working to improve the image of manufacturing. That when people think of manufacturing, a lot of times they think of that 70s version, that dark, dirty, dangerous, I don't want to do that job. And so we're working to promote what manufacturing actually looks like in 2017. I really enjoy this job because you really feel like you, really feel like you can see where so many parts fit together, but the functions are, you know, it seems very complicated, but at the same time, the functions are very practical. You know, I, I always, sometimes I call it, it's almost like an offensive lineman of cranes. We're in the dirt, we'll fix the bridge, we'll fix the power, you know, we'll build the water tank. It's all the practical things of life that people just kind of take, yeah, for granted you know, how they get their water, how they get their power, how, they, how their roads were constructed, how their bridges were constructed, why wow, that retaining walls, you know, on the side of an interstate now. And we build all that. And I think that's just very rewarding, you know, to see the labor that goes on here in Virginia, you know, both at Claypool Hill and Richlands, builds machines that have such practical applications out in the world and all over the world, which is really fun. I mean, we have cranes in, from Antarctica to, Thailand, to South America, to you know, New York, LA, Australia, and everywhere in between. One of the things that you, you have to understand is that this area in particular has always been married to the coal mines. Um, if you didn't work in the coal mine industry directly, uh, you worked in the grocery stores that sold the food, you worked in the car lots that sold the vehicles, you worked in the gas stations that sold the gas to the vehicles that went in the mines. You built mining equipment. Everything was married to the mines. Well, that industry, as of late, as everybody knows, has it's taken a hit, um, and a big hit. Uh, so you don't just see it on, with the workers that work in the mines, everybody feels it. And Tadano has has come in. They, they've been great because um, they've taken, this, they've taken this workforce that is very good at what they do. They take pride in their product. Um, there is an, an ethics here that's ingrained in our workers. Our workers take pride in what they do, um, or the people in this area take pride in what they do. Tadano's ca Tadano has capitalized on that. They've taken um, a workforce that was struggling with an industry that is long since gone, um, all but gone, should I say? And they've uh, they provided training on top of that that product pride that 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 the people here already have, and they've built a workforce that is 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 creating a product and building a product that I mean, my opinion, second to none. So you won't see a mantis crane rumbling down the highway. But be sure that the bridges, utility poles, and other major pieces of infrastructure that make up the highway system and other large-scale construction projects were completed with the use of a crawler crane. And the world's finest, Tadano Mantis, is made in Virginia. The crane was originally invented to replace a ramp, which allowed material to be moved vertically. The earliest cranes of ancient Rome were called trespastos and consisted of what three primary parts? A. A beam, 
a rope, and a three-pulley block. B. A beam, a rope, and a hand crank. C. A beam, a counterweight, and a rope. Stay tuned to Made in Virginia for the answer. Made in Virginia is brought to you by... At Union Bank and Trust, we salute the dreamers, the thinkers, the doers, the believers, the builders, and the makers. Thanks to your vision, hard work, and innovation, you make Virginia shine. Union Bank and Trust, a partner of Virginia business and a proud supporter of Made in Virginia and Virginia Public Broadcasting. T Mike, honoring Virginia's manufacturing heritage and proudly supporting Made in Virginia. T Mike, we drive industry. And a very special thanks to Made in Virginia supporters. The Woodrow Wilson Presidential Library and Museum in Stanton, Virginia. A truly unique Made in Virginia experience. The Greater Augusta Regional Chamber of Commerce, a partner for success. And the Law Offices of Allen and Carwile. Although the Romans were not the first to use a crane, they made great strides in its use and development. The answer is A. A trespostos crane consisted of a beam, a rope, and a three-pulley block. The trespostos increased a man's repeatable long-term lifting power from 50 kilograms to 150 kilograms, just over 300 pounds. From ballistic armor to flying surfboard keels to just about everything in between, you will be amazed at the list of products manufactured by the Strongwell Corporation, the largest poltrusion company in the world. Join us as we reveal the secrets of poltrusion and the boundless applications for poltruded fiber reinforced polymer products next time on Made in Virginia. If you would like to learn more about today's episode or suggest a Virginia manufacturer for the program, you may visit us at madeinvirginia.tv and at wvpt.net.